Hi, this is Kevin Lamping, a front-end developer and tester. In this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate AppliTools and WebDriver I.O. to give you the power of visual testing without too much effort. Before I jump into the code, I want to show off what WebDriver I.O. does and how it can be a good fit for you. WebDriver I.O. is a Node.js binding library for the WebDriver protocol. This protocol is used by tools such as Selenium. Since the tool runs in Node.js, it's really great for front-end developers. The JavaScript syntax is going to be really familiar to them. It also works with many popular front-end test frameworks out there, such as Mocha, Jasmine, and Cucumber.js. By pairing AppliTools with WebDriver I.O., front-end developers gain the ability to run visual testing in a straightforward manner without the need to go in-depth on Selenium. Let's go ahead and spend the next few minutes getting a local WebDriver I.O. test suite set up. Now, to run WebDriver I.O., you are going to need a local Node.js install. I recommend either downloading it straight from the Node.js homepage or using a tool like NVM to install and run Node.js. I'm going to jump into a project folder that I already have set up through NPM and use the npm install command to install WebDriver I.O. to my local directory. Now that WebDriver I.O. is installed, I can use its command line utility to run the configuration setup. To do that, I'll type in npx wdio config. This configuration utility is going to ask me a series of questions about how I want to have my project set up. The first question it asks is where I want to execute my tests. I can choose on my local machine or in the cloud or using another service such as my own Selenium cloud. I'd like to run these on my local machine for now. Then it asks me which test framework I would like to use. I'm most familiar with Mocha, so I'll choose that. And it wants me to know if I want to install the framework adapter, which would be super helpful, so I'll answer yes. Then it asks where my test specs are located. I'll stick with the default here. And then it asks what type of reporter I would like to use. The reporter will basically tell you how your test ran. And the dot reporter is a good basic reporter to start with, so I'll choose that. And again, it asks if it wants to install the reporter library for me, which I'll answer yes to. There are several services that come with WebDriver IO that you can install outside of the base package. Um, if you're using a service like Sauce or Browser Stack, this is a great time to select those. The one that we're going to go with is Selenium Standalone, which will start a Selenium server locally for us when our tests are run. And then it kindly asks again if you would like it to install the services for you, which will say yes. The logging verbosity is basically how much output WebDriver I.O. will send to your terminal when it's running its test. We'll go with verbose so that we can see everything that's going on. And then we can also specify where we want screenshots to be saved to when commands fail. We'll stick with the default here. And then now it wants to know what URL we're testing. I'm going to use the AppliTools website. They have a Hello World page that's really great for running some example tests on. So I'll add that URL in there. And with all those questions answered, it goes ahead and installs all the packages and services that we requested and lets us know that this configuration file was created. I'm going to open up a new file in my text editor and save it as visual.js in my test specs folder. I'll start off my test by defining the describe and it blocks that Mocha will use to run my code. I'll say we want to test the Hello World page and ensure it looks visually perfect. Inside my it block, I'll ask WebDriver IO to load the Hello World page by using the browser.url command. Next, I'll get the title of the page using the get title command, and I'll store it as a local variable. Finally, I'll print the title of my page via console log so that I can manually validate it's correct. It's not much of a test, but it provides the basic structure for integrating with AppliTools. Let's run the test to make sure everything is set up properly. Back in my command line, I'll use the npx wdio command to trigger WebDriver IO. You can see it load up the browser, go to the URL I specified, and then log out the title of the page. Now that I have my test working, it's time to add the power of AppliTools to it. First, I need to install the AppliTools SDK for WebDriver IO. I'll do that now. With it installed, I'll jump back into my test file and require it at the top. I'll pull in both the eyes and target objects via my require statement. Next, I need to initialize a new eyes instance. I'll do this by calling new eyes, storing it as a local constant. In order for AppliTools to know which account to use, I need to tell it my API key. You can get the API key by going to your AppliTools dashboard and getting your API key from the profile menu. 
Moving to our test, we're going to define a try finally block. The reason for this is due to the network calls required when running our AppleTools commands. Because we can't guarantee that the network calls will always succeed, we need to handle the rare case when they don't. Inside our finally block, we'll call eyes.abort if not closed, which will mark our test as aborted if it hasn't closed by that point. Most of the time it will have closed, but this handles the rare case where it failed. Because this command runs a network request, it's going to be an asynchronous call. We're going to convert it to be a synchronous command by using the await keyword. In order to use the await keyword, we need to define our function as an async one. To do that, we'll add the async keyword to the start of our function definition. The async and await keywords are relatively new syntax and are a bit too advanced of a topic to dive into right now. There are many detailed tutorials out there on the subject though, so I suggest having a look through them if you'd like more details. Inside the try block, we'll start things off by getting the viewport size. This value will be passed to eyes in just a second. After that line, we'll open up a new eyes test case by calling eyes.open. Inside the call, we'll pass in the following values. The browser instance we're using, the title of our application, the name we want to use for our test, and the viewport size we're running at. With our test case now open in AppleTools, we're going to use the eyes.check command to do a visual snapshot of the current page. We'll pass in the name we want to give the screenshot, plus the target window object for reference. Next, we'll click the Click Me button on the page, triggering a change in the display. Again, we'll use the eyes.check command to run another screenshot capture, passing in a new screenshot name, letting us know we've clicked the button. Finally, we'll close out our eyes test by calling the eyes.close command. Okay, we've got everything in place now to run our AppleTools check. Let's go back to the command line and run our npx wdio command again. The output looks very similar, but behind the scenes, it has uploaded our screenshots to our AppleTools account. Now we'll head over to our AppleTools dashboard to check out our screenshots. As you can see, we've got a new test recorded, and inside of it, we have two new screenshots. At this point, everything is set up for our AppleTools visual test suite. The next time we run our test, it will compare the new screenshots with what's stored on AppleTools, and we'll catch any visual issues. To validate this, Let's make one last temporary change to our test. We'll update the browser.url command to go to a slightly different version of the Hello World page, simulating one of those tricky visual regressions that can go unnoticed for weeks. We'll save the test and run it again. When the visual comparison completes, it will fail the test due to the difference in the screenshots. At this point, we can choose to update the baseline, create a smart region for it, or mark the test as a failure and update the team. If you'd like to try this out without writing the code yourself, hop on over to the GitHub page for it. Do a git clone, then npm install, and finally npx wdio. Both AppleTools and WebDriver.io are amazing tools that have so much more to offer than what I've covered here. Hopefully, this gets you going with both tools, allowing you to take advantage of the base functionality each one provides.